Hi, my name's Bob Greenier, and I'm a volunteer for the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Welcome to Stardust. By way of introduction to this, I'd like to read you a short passage from Margaret Cheney's Tesla, A Man Out of Time. On the day in Budapest, when the concept of the rotating magnetic field was revealed to Tesla, he had seen in a flash the universe composed of a symphony of alternating currents, with the harmonies played on a vast range of octaves. The 60 cycles per second AC was but a single note in a lower octave. In one of the higher octaves, at a frequency of billions of cycles per second, was visible light. To explore this whole range of electrical vibration between his low-frequency alternating current and light waves, he sensed, would bring him closer to an understanding of the cosmic symphony. At the end of this series of Stardust videos, you should have more insight into how the key elements for life may have been synthesized. What may be the basis for many observations in the low energy nuclear reactions field? Simple experiments you can do in your university or other lab. How practical technologies are being made to work. And ideas for how you might create the right conditions for Lena. Hi, so I'm here with George Eagley in the beautiful Central European city of Budapest, uh, capital of Hungary on the Danube, that's right, isn't it, George? Well, we are roughly two kilometers from the Danube. It's not visible from this point. <laughs> so I'm here to talk about your uh, dusty plasma Lena experiments. And you... It's cold fusion, in fact, transmutation, and maybe some, uh, some energy release, but we haven't checked into that. OK. Your paper's just been published at infinite-energy.com, I'm right in understanding. Yes. And this summarizes your work up till what point? Uh, until this March. Until this March. So uh, one of the things that people will question is, and you just said it, this is about transmutation and cold fusion. How do dust particles allow this to happen? Actually, uh, this is the oldest form of, uh, of uh, fusion. It hasn't been discovered by me. It was uh, discovered by Nikola Tesla in his carbon uh, button experiment. Uh, high frequency, high voltage experiment in a spherical uh, resonator and it has been a resonant uh, process. He has uh, published in, in written form all this stuff, but it, uh, of course nobody knew why this transmutation uh, goes on and it has been completely forgotten. And uh, every generation or so it has been rediscovered and, and forgotten. This is a vicious cycle because in the uh, uh, early 30s uh, uh, in the United States, Henry Moray discovered it uh, and uh, uh, never t told the secret, but uh, we know that it was also a very high voltage, high frequency plasma discharge device, which he made uh, electric energy, and not a small amount, but kilowatts of it. And uh, in the uh, <clears throat> 60s and 70s of the last century, a Hungarian-born inventor, Pop, Joseph Pop, made his noble gas engine based unknowingly, but on the same phenomena. So, and uh, in the ICCF 20, I have seen a, a Russian researcher uh, talking about two arc discharge experiments, uh, also uh, producing neutrons and, and uh, tritium and helium, and always arc discharge. And in an arc discharge, you like it or no, uh, but uh, due to the uh, 
evaporation of the cathode, some fine dust is created. So actually, uh, though forgotten by physicists, known by engineers, uh, this dust, this transient dusty plasma always appears. And if you are careful experimenter and, and you look uh, at the transmutation data, you will always find something fishy. Uh, going on. So actually this is the poor man's uh, uh, fusion reactor. The only thing is uh, uh, the, the engineering side, uh, how to do it efficiently. Because uh, for a uh, carbon arc, uh, the so-called George Oshawa cycle has been discovered in the 30s and then again in the 60s when you have nothing but uh, pure carbon and air that is nitrogen and oxygen you got lots of of transmuted materials which we also found and verified we were not the first uh, to stumble into this phenomena we were maybe the fifth or sixth uh, in the row however there were two major differences. By the time I started to investigate uh, uh, resonant uh, dusty plasma, uh, due to the research in, uh, in uh, cosmology, uh, interstellar uh, dusty plasma started to be uh, researched. And though not, it's, it's not yet a big field, but there are already papers on it. And from these papers, I have realized that transient dusty plasma has several very interesting features. One of them that actually due to the so-called plasma wake field acceleration, you get extremely high potential uh, electron waves. Actually, tabletop accelerators are being built right now based on this concept, which have uh, uh, in the uh, uh, which have the the uh, accelerating potential in the order of giga electron volts. That is uh, much much better than the let's say the LHC. A large Hadron Collider in, in, in Geneva, uh, Switzerland. So this is more powerful in case of a, of a transient plasma. However, the beam is not nice. It is uh, not homogeneous, uh, it's not coherent, but for practical reasons, who cares? So actually, this is an extremely powerful magnification uh, device for Mother Nature. And even, let's say, if you have a fairly steady state uh, DC electric discharge in plasma, even then electrons accumulate on the surface of the, of the dust particles, and sometimes uh, a billion, 10 on 9th electrons are accu accumulated on the surface. It means just uh, in, in steady state you have an extreme accelerating potential because if you have uh, uh, zillions of electrons accumulated in the, uh, on the uh, dust surface, of course positive ions will be accelerated. You like it or not, but this is the reason. But if you add uh, let's say, a transient plasma uh, and this uh, so-called plasma wake field acceleration, you uh, increase this effect uh, by two or three orders of magnitude. And uh, if you uh, employ resonant plasma, you add two more orders of magnitude. So we have, uh, at the end, uh, with a relatively simple modest device, such an enormous uh, potential for, for acceleration, both for ions and both for electrons, that there is nothing comparable on Earth, uh, including uh, a large hadron collider or whatever. Uh, actually, there is only one comparable uh, site it is the corona of, of, all, of all stars in the universe. And uh, 
Of course, if we look at the corona, the solar corona, we, all, we always find something fishy going on. Actually, the solar corona has a temperature of, of 180 million degrees C, while the surface of the uh, sun is 7000 uh, Kelvin only. So we also know that in case of, uh, of, of dusty transient plasma, something uh, unusual uh, goes on. And uh, dusty plasma, in fact, uh, one can find in all in inside the the living cell because a, a living cell uh, is an electrolyte and you have dust particles m mitochondria and and other tiny little organs uh, within every cell let it be human plant animal even bacteria so this is uh, also another area for nature actually mother nature uh, who also discovered uh, uh, this kind of acceleration though in a modest form but uh, if one is uh, looking carefully into mother nature one can find transmutation in biology as well so there is suspicion that calcium made by mountains of seashells is is manufactured by uh, biological transmutation you may like or you may not like this idea but one can look at into this uh, phenomena so thank you for your overview um, I noticed that you referred to Tesla and some people credit him as being the first to identify a process which created Lena with the carbon button experiment yeah. and I understood I think it was in 1886 or something around in the 1880s he went to the Royal Society and presented this in, in London yes um, and that was a, it was a monopole high high um, tension uh, device your your devices um, are, are more based on magnetrons right well, actually microwaves, microwaves. Uh, microwaves and uh, because they are cheaper uh, i mean if this uh, 1.5 kilowatt kitchen microwaves are good enough then then they are cheap industrial magnetrons are more expensive tesla of course had no mic uh, microwaves however he had his uh, single wire uh, resonant uh, magnifying transformer which was uh, able to produce later potentials up to 1 million volts. Mm 